Isn't God good? All the time. All the time. God is good. <laughs> Did y'all see me ask where I'm girl? That's good. Okay, welcome to Every Christian Church. It's an awesome day to be alive, and we're going to expect God to do something great. I know it's summertime. I know we got other places we'd rather be or like to be, but let's first put God first and see what happens if we put Him first. The rest of the day will go by a whole lot smoother. I promise. Not my promise. He is. All right. So y'all get ready to worship God. Okay, this is the day. Y'all stand up and say this with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. Did I say it again? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And try not to mess it up. <laughs> Y'all smile. It's okay. You can smile in God's house. I promise you. There's a whole lot of frowning. We can smile too. It's all right. All right. Ready? Let's go ahead. Y'all say this with me. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one, except my worship, O oh Lord. Amen. Ain't God good? All the time. Let's get ready to throw down for the Lord. Y'all ready? Let's do some old stuff. Then we're going to go a little more modern as we get going along, okay? A little more modern. <laughs> be a modern one that was written back when Moses was alive. Y'all ready? Figure that one out. How many saw the light? Maybe we're just going to jump in there. Uh, I saw Except my seed, 
Oh, Lord, give Lord a hand clap for Christ. Praise the Lord, saints. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this time. Does anybody have an outspoken request this morning? Uplifted hands, special needs? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the time and opportunity we have to be in your house this morning. And we ask that you would minister mightily as we are gathered here today in one mind and one accord. Father, just let your spirit prevail throughout each and every one of us in this service today and in our lives as we depart. God, we just ask you to show yourself strong on our behalf. Father, let, let us see it and know it that we can give testimony of what you've done and how you've moved in our lives and in this service today. And Father, we'll be sure to give you glory, honor, and praise for it all. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Now everybody stand again. Give a little another hand clap of praise. Come on. God's got this. That's right. God's got this. Amen. God's got this. All right. How many know that if, you, if you're serving God and you're doing like you're supposed to, you're just going to keep on falling in love over and over and over again, okay?
Amen. Now we're going to sing this again, but this time we'll put your hands together. And remember, we're not just singing this to God, saying God will need you to move, but we're singing to the devil, saying get out of the way. God will want you to move, and the devil get out of the way. Amen. Amen. Y'all say that. We want God to move, and we want the devil to get out of the way. So this time when you sing it, go ahead and put those hands together. Put some life in it, because you know what? This is very, very powerful. I just think about all those a million and a half people getting ready to move through the wilderness, and they're singing this before they get going. Amen? Ready? Put your hands together. Ready? Let God. He said, let God arise and his enemies be splattered. <laughs> okay, so look, that, one more time. We're going to see God's enemies splattered. Ready? Let God Somebody say, somebody say, God gave us a possession. 
Somebody said that. Now look at somebody else who say, then, then keep it. Somebody said, I keep it. Amen. And the twelve men have built thee a sanctuary in thy name, saying, If when evil cometh up to us, upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, and thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldst not let Israel in vain when they came out of the land of Egypt, but thou turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come out, cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them, for we have no might against them, this great company that cometh against us. Neither know what we are to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Some of you here right now, you're saying this, look, I put this in English. Stuff's happening in my life that I cannot help, I cannot control, and I don't know what to do. That's just putting it in English, okay? Possum track talk. Stuff's happening I cannot control, I cannot fix, and I don't know what to do. Anybody like that this morning? Amen. Amen. And all Judah, all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and thy children. Let's just stop it right there for right now. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, that you are alive and you are on the throne. And Father, I know, Lord, that, that, that times come in our life and we don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to handle it. Anything we say and do sometimes seems like it's wrong. And so we just choose to sit back. And then if we're not careful, we'll miss what you're trying to do. So show us, God. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. And help us to make a difference in somebody's life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said Amen. amen, amen. You can be seated. On the way down, tell somebody the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. I'm going to finish up from last week. You know, a guy comes to a coffee shop and places his order. He says, I want three flat tires and a pair of headlights. The waitress, not wanting to appear stupid, goes to the kitchen. You ever heard one of those? The waitress not wanting to appear stupid goes to the kitchen and asks the cook. This guy out there just ordered three flat tires and a pair of headlights. What does he think this is? An auto parts store? No, the cook says three flat tires means three pancakes. And a pair of headlights means he wants two eggs sunny side up. Oh, said the waitress. She had to be from Possum Track. Oh, said the waitress. She thought about it for a while and then she spoons up a bowl of beans and gives it to the customer. The guy says, what are the beans for? The waitress said, I thought that while you were waiting for your flat tires and headlights, you might want to gas up. <laughs> All right. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about overcoming the deflated attitude. i got a few slides, just a few from last week, just so we can have some continuity. So you know where we're coming from if you weren't here last week or didn't see it on, on Facebook. Uh, Jehoshaphat was facing a real threat. Moab was defeated by him now, triples its strength, and it comes back. Somebody say, Satan does not play dead very well. He's coming back. He's coming back. Even Jesus, after he come out of the wilderness, the Bible said the devil left him alone for what? A season. Just a season. I'm going to tell you something. The seasons in your life where you might think things are going really, really good, you go, wow, this is awesome. And that's the season when he's not around with you and not trying to get you. But I promise you, and I'm not trying to be a doom and gloom man, but I'm telling you that he knows his seasons and he knows when to come back and come back with force. And that's why it's happening here. So this un unexpected threat produced real fear and the fear deflated the spirit. Now, let me just, let me just... Talk about this deflated spirit, then we're going to go in to this morning's message. What, you know, uh, uh, what is a deflated spirit or a deflated attitude? I'm glad you asked. Fear rises up in your life, usually from unexpected circumstances, and it takes the wind out of your sail. You're not depressed yet. I mean, you're not ready to, you're not ready to call it quits. You're, you're not ready just to quit everything and go climb in a hole somewhere, but... Now, the wind's out of your sail. Where you were up and running, where you were up doing good, and you felt God's presence and God's power, and you knew God was working in your life, and you just knew that God had everything together for you. 
All of a sudden now, doubt comes in because the wind has been taken out of your cell. So, when this happens, this deflated attitude exaggerates your problem and it minimizes your power because it confuses your faith. It deflates your faith, your hope, and your expectation. And if un left unattended, it will drive depression. All right? So, you know, if we go stick a depression test right now for some of y'all, go, no, you're not depressed. Well, what's going on? Why do they feel so bad? It's because the wind has been taken out of your cell. It, yeah, that, that want to, you want to is gone. The get up and go has then got up and went. Okay? So when you get to this point, it, it drives you to a decision point. Stay in confusion looking for an answer. Or do I take it to the one who is the answer? So now, now that, that, that's getting ready. We're getting ready to jump into the new stuff. Ready? Let's just, let's just go one, one step further here, okay? How do I inflate a deflated spirit? You know, one day I was, uh, I keep an inflator in my car, and that thing has worked for years. And one day on the way, by, on the way out of Greenville, I was on the way home, and it was, I don't know, I was leaving Pitt Detention Center. I stopped and got supper, and it was, I don't know, like 3, 3.30, 4 o'clock, quarter after 4 something. And I heard a noise, and I said, wait a minute, that, that's a tire. And so I'm going down 264, and I go down the side road where you really can't see unless you really look. You couldn't see me because I was way down this road out of the way. I, didn't, I, I don't like getting run over. I don't know about y'all. You know, that's all on my to-do list. It's all on my bucket list. Oh, I'm going to get run over today. And so I pull out and I got uh, 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 my car, of course, what was, was, was I had some stuff in the trunk. You know, yeah, I got junk in the trunk. <laughs> that is a sermon coming up too, junk in the trunk. <laughs> Amen. But, but I had junk in the trunk and so here I'm on the side of the road. I'm pulling out looking like I'm having a yard sale right down the side of the road. And, and, and first off, before I did that, though, I grabbed my inflator. And when I went to inflate, that tire, my inflator, blew a fuse. So here I am, now it's starting to rain. I'm deflated. So I start looking for another answer. So I start pulling the junk out of the trunk. This has all got washed. Put it on the side of the road. And I pull out my spare tire. You know those little donuts? I've got a 2004. It hadn't been pulled out ever. So I take that and that little itty bitty jack that looks like come out of a box of Cracker Jacks and forever spinning that thing, getting wet. And I jack up the car and stick that tire on it and put it down that tire slab. So not only am I deflated, I'm in double deflated. Still not depressed. So I called Linda and I said, Linda, I'm out here. You got to find me. We got that thing on our phone so we can find each other. So you got to find me. I'm out here 264 down the side road. You got to come pick me up. We got to take the tire to give me a look at. And so then I get my car and watch this. And I said, you know, I forgot one person to talk to. I know y'all never had that problem. Y'all are so holy. Y'all might need to adjust your halo while we're talking, okay? And I said, Lord, you're more powerful than this. Yes, I've got a deflated tire and I've got a deflated spare tire. Everything I got is deflated. But I'm not going to get depressed. I said, Lord, show me your power and your might. I'm not even going to call. I'm just going to let you show me your power. I said, God, I don't know if Daniel's even working today. I don't know what time he gets off. But Lord, it would be awesome for you just to show off and let him come and help me. And I got in the car and I closed the door and I said, Amen. And this big old black truck pulls right up behind me. First I thought it was a state patrolling. Then I thought it was looking for the yard sale. And it was Daniel. I had just prayed. He said, Hey Pops, you got a problem? <laughs> No, Daniel, I just thought I'd go over here at Yard Sale. 
And so Daniel gets up and he takes the tire and he says, just, just, just let me do it. He takes the tire, we go, we go to town, we get it all fixed, we come back, he puts it back, I don't have to touch a thing. And I said, isn't God so awesome that in your moment when you're deflated, times two, that he shows up like that. Very, very powerful. So, so here it is. How, how do we get beyond the deflated attitude or deflated spirit? How do we get our will back? How do we find our strength to get back into the battle? Because some of us, we've had our hands slapped. We've had our fingers stuck in the trap. We've had all kinds of things happen. We're battle weary. We've got scars. And we're wondering, I don't know if I want to get back out there because I'm not sure. Well, well, there's three ways to handle the deflated spirit. Here's where we stopped last week. And, and, and this is where we're going to get, take up the new stuff. Ready? There's two ways to handle the inflated spirit. Some of these, I've done all three. I don't know about y'all. Remember, y'all got to adjust your halo. Matter of fact, you might want to hold your hand over your halo when I say this. So you'll say, well, at least he did it. I did it. Okay? Number one, you can deny. I like it doesn't exist. I'm fine. Really? Oh, there's no problem here. You're on the side of the road. You ain't got a tire. It's flat. Your spare is flat. Your junk in the truck is down the side of the road. You look like a rotten yard sale. You mean you were denying you got a deflated spirit? <laughs> oh, some of y'all. Some of your halos just started getting crooked. Or you can fry. You get overcome by fear and you start doing, okay, I'm going to use the Hebrew word. You take stuff in your hands and you start doing, this is the Hebrew, did you know this? Stupid stuff. <laughs> you try to fix it yourself and you know what you actually do? You make a bigger problem. Because you're trying to fix it. And guess what? You can't fix it. And so you make matters worse. Then, there's rely. You can rely, set yourself, seek the Lord, and watch how God does. When I set my look, I'm in the trunk, I'm going through everything, and, and then when I finally say, you know what, I'm just going to ask you, God, just show you power. And here comes Daniel. What's up, Pops? Let's get this thing working for you. I didn't, he said, he was riding down the road. He said, I don't want to look down this road. He said, but I'm riding down the road. And he said, I felt this need to look down the road. I looked down the road and I said, is that my dad? What's he doing down there? What's that junk in the trunk? <laughs> and so then he pulls up, comes back around, and pulls right back in behind me. So, so get ready. Get ready. Ready? <clears throat> I'm just going to be quick about this so, so we can, because uh, it's so much. I could break this down and make a whole series out of it. I'm not. I'm just going to go through it. Some of y'all, go ahead. Y'all look at somebody and say, hang on. Hang on. Ready? Get ready. <clears throat> Now, now, here he is, they're deflated. They've got, look, it's hard enough to take on one enemy, but now you've got three. Some of y'all right now say, well, I can handle it if I just had one problem, but do you know how many problems i got going at once? Do you know the average person has between 10 to 12 problems at one time anyway? Did you know that? You think, well, I, I don't have any problems, but that's your first one. <laughs> you may be denied it. Ten to twelve problems each. Can you imagine if you're married and your ten to twelve problems are not the same ten to twelve problems your wife's got? Or your kids have got? Do you know how many problems now you got? Wow! So, 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 so here we go. Watch this. Here's what he did. The very first thing he did, and then we're going to, we're going to take a kind of battle of this. You will not need to fight. In, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position. See the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. God has never lost a battle. You know that? Have you ever known God lose a battle? Never. Ever. So let's go. Let's get ready to go. So prayer. Here's the prayer. First, he called. He opened his mouth. He called. He, now watch what he did. First, first thing he did was he called a fast. Wait a minute. He called it fast, yeah, because he wants to talk to God, but he knows the Lord to talk to God, he better get serious. This isn't time for what? Now let me down to sleep. I pray the Lord that you beat all them people beat. No. He wanted to get serious. How many's ever had problems and you lost your appetite? Well, guess what? That's not fasting. Lose your
your appetite's a sign that it's getting to you. So if losing your appetite, and I've done it too. We all do. Every last one of us. So I'm trying to tell you how to get out of it. Instead of losing your appetite, which is a negative thing, why don't you try fasting? That's a positive thing. Fasting means I just put, you don't have to push aside food, push aside something, but push aside something and say, God, I want to talk to you so bad and I need you so much and I know it's affecting me that I'm going to, I'm going to get me out of my way. That's what fasting is. It gets you out of the way. So first, he calls fast. And then he, then he calls upon God. We just read the prayer. He stood in the congregation and he called God. But not any of all the right people. And of course, it started right away. He got the people together and, and, and he talked about it. And then, of course, it's in all Judea. And then with all Judea stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Let me tell you something about the deflated spirit. Sometimes we get a deflated spirit and we go to the wrong people. I hope you're born you still tough. How many times do you get a problem with Tom and you go to Harry to talk about your problem with Tom? I'm not talking about counseling. There's a difference. They're counseling. You come to me. It's not that you're tattletaling. It's that you're asking, how do I handle it? That's a whole different, way, a whole different thing. I'm not talking about counseling. I'm talking about Tom hurt my feelings, so, so let me tell him Tommy hurt my feelings. I tell Harry. Harry may think he's got all the answers, and he may tell you what Tom's thinking. The only problem is, he don't know what Tom's thinking. I didn't hear one guy one day, it was so funny. I was counseling some people one time, and, 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 and the guy told me, said, said, my wife got some new hearing aids, she said they're so good, she can hear what I'm thinking when I'm out in the backyard under the shelter. I like that, so it didn't hear it. <laughs> Amen. So, doesn't mean you can't go to people for support. You do, but let that be the last thing. And nothing else is I need prayer. I'm going to go to Harry and say I need prayer. And he goes, what's going on? Well, just no, I need some prayer right now. And I, when I feel led, I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in. But until right now, I just need prayer. The first thing you need to do is talk to God. <clears throat> Number one. Talk to God. Then number two, involve the right people. Instead of going to Harry, why don't you go to Tom? I'm not saying Tom's going to be ready. I'm not saying Tom's whatever, but until you, that's why you go to God first. You go to God first because God works everything out. Then you go to Tom and you feel that God's worked it out. You go to Tom and talk to Tom. But that's the same way here. Jehoshaphat, it wasn't just Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was having a problem, but it involved his whole family. I'm talking about his whole family in, at large. And so first he goes to God. First he gets himself ready to hear. Then he goes to God. And then he involves the right people. Now, here's the prophecy. He calls, and God calls back. Wow. Isn't that awesome? And the first thing God says is, I love it. Let's see, it's right, verse 14. After he calls God, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeal, the son of Mataniah, the Levite, the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation, and he said, Hark ye, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord, unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's God. So watch what he says. Watch this. Number one, you don't have to be afraid or deflated. That's what dismayed means, deflated. Did you know that? This word I'm using for deflated, when I'm talking about having the wind out of your cell, that's what dismayed, uh, dismayed, dismayed means. It means to break down by confusion or fear, it means literally to be beat down, discouraged, to cause to not be able to think, uh, to have your wind out of your sail, to be deflated. He said, you don't have to be afraid. Of course, you know what fear is? You don't have to be afraid, and you don't have to let this fear deflate you. He said, because the battle is not yours, 
The battle is mine. So what he's telling me is, yeah, you're still going to have to do something. You've got to do something. But don't do it on your own. Don't try to figure it out on your own. He said, Jehoshaphat, you let me give you the plans and you follow my plans. And if you follow my plans, yes, you're still going to have to do something, but the struggle is not yours. It's mine. So the, the next thing he was saying is, when he said the struggle is mine, what that says is, is you don't have to go it alone. A lot of times when we get deflated, we think we're in this by ourselves. We can't talk to anybody. We can't say anything. We don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. We can't figure it out. Go to God. Number one, no matter what kind of battle you're in, let me tell you something. How many parents have we got here? Let me ask you a question. If your child has a problem, is it just your child's problem or do you get involved? Why? Because of my children, when they were little, when they had a problem, I had a problem. Even now, they're a lot older, they're 40 down, but you know what, when they got a problem, I got a problem, just I handle it differently now, because they're adults. But when they were little, they had a problem, I had a problem. And I was involved in every last one of them, okay? So, so you don't have to go alone. God wants to get involved in your struggle, and He wants to take the reins. That's what He's saying. Let me get involved in your struggle. Let me get involved in what's deflating you and let me take the reins. And when I take the reins, you don't feel like you got to do it by yourself. So then next, let's keep on going here, is the praise. So, so, so God tells me you ain't got to go alone. He says, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, you go ahead and position yourself where I tell you and then you stand. Don't, 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 don't let fear and don't let that deflated spirit cause you to run. You stand. Because when you work my plan, you're not going to have to run. When you work my plan, there's going to be a solution. When you work my plan, something's going to happen. But the biggest thing is you're going to get the wind back in your sail. Okay? So, so the praise is first, he calls God, God calls back. Then God and Jehoshaphat call the enemy. Because watch this. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, Ju Ju Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with thee. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the children of the uh, Hathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. And they went forth. Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. In other words, if you're going to believe what God says, you can stand still. You can stand strong. You can know that whatever God told you, you can take it to the bank. If God gives you a promise, it's good as done. You may not see it at the time. <clears throat> but if God gives you a promise, it is good as done. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before, before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy <clears throat> endures forever. Now let me just, I just want to, let me just do this a little different here. Ready? First to order. They're fighting an army three times plus their size and strength. Three times their size. And so God gives them battle directions. The order is, I don't want you to put your army out front. I want you to put your singers out front. Wait a minute. Do you understand we are outnumbered, outgunned? Yes. But now's not the time. I did it my way. Regrets, I have a few. And in fact, I'm saying this, but then again, too few to mention. Not me. Regrets, I have a few. And if I had a big book, I still couldn't mention them all. <laughs> Put the singers out front. It should have sparked something. I'm pretty sure it did because in the wilderness, whenever they traveled in the wilderness, whenever Moses said, let God arise, 
Let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. Guess who got in front? Judah. You know what Judah means? Praise. Whenever they moved in the wilderness, they were always led forth with praise. And so now they're going into battle. And God says, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to go in this battle praising me. Not praising the enemy. Oh, come on. Amen. I want you to go in this battle. You've got a deflated spirit. And if you go in this battle with that deflated spirit, you're going to be praising the enemy. You know you're outnumbered. You know you're out good. But if you go in the battle the way I tell you, and you praise me, something different is going to happen. And so there was the order. And then, the, the, here's the action. I love it. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were coming to Judah, and they were smitten. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's see how, let's watch how God does this. And watch this. And let's keep on going. The reaction. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay, to, to slay and destroy them. And when they made an end of the inhabitants of Mount Seir, everyone helped to destroy the other. In other words, look at this. Isn't this crazy? Three times your strength, three times your power is coming against you. But instead of putting the army out front, you put the singers out front. You praise God because you're praising God, not the enemy. And when the enemy sees you praising God, praising God versus them, and they can't stand it. And so the enemy turned on each other and they consumed themselves while God's people were just praising. Wow. They're praising God and those guys are beating themselves to death. Some of y'all in here are beating yourself to death. You need to be praising God and watch the enemy beat themselves to death. Are you tired of getting beat up? Are you tired of being deflated? Are you tired of problems dragging you down and dragging you through the mud? Quit trying to fight the enemy because you cannot. He is a spiritual giant. But we serve one who created him. And when we praise God, the enemy cannot come against you because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Get it in the proper order. Praise God first and watch what happens. I love this. This is so, so awesome. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Wow. If they had done it their way, that would have been a whole different outcome. You've got to put praise up front. You've got to learn to let God let God arise. I, I love, listen to this, I, I, love, I love this, the message. Then, uh, Jezreel, uh, Je, the prophet moved <laughs> by the Spirit of God speaking in the midst of the congregation and he said, attention everyone, all y'all, he had to be southern, all y'all. All y'all from out of town, all y'all from Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, God's word. Don't be afraid. Don't pay any mind to this vandal horde. This is God's war, not yours. Tomorrow you will go out to them. See, they're already on their way to the slopes of Ziz. You will meet them at the end of the ravine near the wilderness of J J J that place. <laughs> and you won't have to lift a hand in this battle. Just stand firm, Judah and Jerusalem, and watch God's saving work for you take shape. Don't be afraid. Don't waver. March out boldly tomorrow. For God is with you. And I'm here to tell you something right now. If you're in here right now and you got a deflated spirit, I can't fix it. I don't even know how to tell you to fix it. But one thing I can tell you is God's got this. Amen. God's got this. Tell somebody God's got this. Come on. God's got it right here. Yes. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, they found amongst them an abundance both with riches, 
with dead bodies and precious jewels, which, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Whoa! It took them three days to take off the spoil because they put God first. Now, now I want to back up and back up and just talk for a minute about something else. You know, the praise, there's power in praise. Man, there's power in praise. Then there's a progression of praise too. I want you to see this and then, then get ready to get ready to end, okay? I said getting ready. Don't get praising that long. Praise God, amen. We don't praise the thought we're getting out of here in like two minutes. Alright. The progression of praise. I want you to just watch something here. This is very powerful. The first time they praise, in verse 19, and the Levites and the children of, of the children of the Kohathites and the children of Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. This means to celebrate, to sound, and look foolish as you thank God for the harvest. In other words, nothing's even happened yet. They're still facing that threat. They still have a deflated spirit. They still have a deflated spirit. But even through the deflated spirit, they begin to praise God anyway and thank Him for the harvest because they knew God's got this. All right? Then the next time, verse 21, And when He had consulted with the people, He appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness, and they went out before the army and said, Praise the Lord for His mercy and dureth forever. Now let me just show you something here. This is y'all to praise. Y'all to praise is when you take your hands and you raise them. So first, watch this, it's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of intimacy. It's a sign of receiving. Can you imagine how crazy those enemy got when instead of expecting machine guns and the Green Beret and the, 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 the special forces to come up and take care of business, all of a sudden these singers come out and go, praise God, praise God for His mercy endures forever. Praise God, praise God for His mercy endures forever. Can you imagine? How they even looked. No, they were surrendering. They were, but they were surrendering to God. Not to them, to God. And it's amazing what happened. Those guys got so, got so fired up, they killed each other. You know what? Y'all try this with me. Watch this. This is y'all to praise. Y'all try this from time to time. I tell you what, man, if you do it in your car and stop like people think you've had it. Watch this. I surrender to you, oh God. Praise God. I need you, my Heavenly Father, and I praise you. I'm receiving from you, God, because I don't have the answer. Wow. I'm surrendering because I don't know what to do. I've got to have your touch. I need to receive from you. And when they did that, wow, what happened. And then finally, in 22, it says, And when they began to sing praises, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. And when they're coming to Judah, they were smitten for the children of Ammon and stood up against each other in Mount Seir. But anyone who abided, the word praise at the end of that was, it means it's, it's tahilah, which means it was good as done. Good as done. I don't see it, but it's good as done. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of things in my life right now I don't see it, but it's good as done. Absolutely. Good as done. Now we're getting really close. There's seven things here that God told Jehoshaphat that he tells every one of us in your battle. Okay? I'm just going to be quick about it. I know you see you never been quick about anything. Oh, yeah. I, I, you don't see me get on the road. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Ready? Let's see. Here we go. Let's see here. Let's get 15. Here we go. Number one, do not fear. He said, do not be afraid. When you're in the battle, check your emotions. Do you know the Bible says that your emotions, your heart is a deceitful thing? Jeremiah says that in 17. He says, your heart is deceitful. Your emotions will play tricks on you. 
Your emotions will cause you to do things you shouldn't do. You're trying to fight the battle, but instead of being strong and firm fighting the battle, you let your emotions get in the way. And when your emotions get in the way, you throw everything you know you need to do out the window because your emotions are so powerful. Number two, do not be dismayed. In other words, don't be deflated. Check yourself mentally. Am I being deflated right now? Am I speaking from a deflated voice? Is the wind not out of my sail? The battle isn't yours, it's mine. Check your position. Are you trying to fight or are you standing behind God and let him fight? Are you trusting God to fight this? Or are you telling God to slide out the way and you fix what I mess up, God? Versus, okay, you're in front of God, I'm behind you. And then, he says, set yourself. Check your courage. Can you stand and wait for God to do something? There's the hard one. I saw some big gulps then. And I'm not talking about drinks. From the fast pattern. Can you stand still and keep your hands out of it and let God work it? Can you set yourself? Y'all going to shout me down before we get through this. Stand still. Check your, stand, check your steadfastness. I can depend on God, but can God depend on me? See the salvation of the Lord. Check your faith. Without faith, you're not going to see it. And then finally, face the enemy with confidence. Tomorrow you're going to go out against him. The Lord will be with you. Check your obedience. When he tells you to step forward, are you going to step forward? There's something you've got to remember. The task ahead of you is never as great as the power behind you. Wow. Everybody stand. Randy, come play something. The task ahead of you is never greater than the power behind you. Jeannie showed me something this morning I thought was so awesome. You'll see it in Mighty Army, not tomorrow, but the next day or so. And that is, let me see if I can get it right. I don't want to mess it up. I, I, you know, I love y'all, y'all, but I sometimes get things a little uh, mixed up. Here you go. An army of sheep led by a lion, can defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. Wow. It's powerful. Think about that. You'll see it in a couple of days. An army of sheep led by a lion, that's us, then God get out front, can defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. Believe it or not, Satan is a sheep when the Holy Spirit gets a hold. Amen. 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 Every head bowed, every eye closed. With all the things that's going on around us, and honestly, I'm not even sure what's going on half the time because just things just get crazier and crazier and crazier. We're being told not to believe what we used to believe. We're told to believe what they want us to believe now and blah, blah, blah. And then with the, you know, just like something simple, not simple, but the Emmaus walk was canceled for a whole year. They were going to have the Emmaus walk this September and they had a meeting yesterday because of the rise in the, in the new variants. They canceled it. So it's not even going to be happening. The Emmaus walk this year is going to be next year because of that variant. Some days I go to the hospital to let me in. Some days I go to the hospital and I can't go in. Sometimes I can go see somebody. Sometimes I can't. Depends on what my arm band has to say a certain name for me to go see that person. I can't see anybody else because of this COVID stuff. And all the mess that's happening around us and all the, oh, it just, it just drives me crazy. All the stuff that's happening around us. If we're not careful, we're going to go out in the battle and praise the enemy. When you fight him on your own, you're praising the enemy. When you fight him 
God's way, you're praising God. I like what the word hallelujah means. Hallelujah means praise be the strong one. Praise be to the strong one. God's got this. We're going to be talking about the horses next week, and you're going to see what's happening. It's unfolding right before our eyes. It's there. You can say, well, they've been talking about a thousand dollars. This is now. This is here. Here it is. It's coming. It's here. But we don't have to be dismayed, deflated. Because God's got this. Every head bowed, every eye closed. In fact, First, I want to say, is anybody here that would just say, look, uh, me and God, we ain't got together right now. I've allowed stuff to happen. I've allowed myself to be deflated. All this stuff's going on. And I haven't gotten closer to God. I've gotten further from God through all of this. And I just need to get back with Him like I should be. With nobody looking around, every eye closed. I just want you just to put it in that hand quickly and put it back down. I, I'm not exactly where I want to be, and I really need God to help me. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Maybe you're here today and you're like Jehoshaphat was. Everything's going good, and now you've found yourself you have a deflated spirit. The wind was going strong in your sails for God, and now. The wind has been taken away. You feel yourself the, 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 just, as a matter of fact, the cells are tattered and torn. And you're seeing God just to shore you up and sure you up and do something special in your life to help you through this as you get the wind back in your sails, as the cells get back where they belong. And I'm talking to you right now. You find yourself with that deflated spirit. You're needing God to help you through this. But nobody looking around, every eye, every head bowed, every eye closed. But just put that hand up. Yes, I, 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 yes, I, I've been deflated. I have definitely been deflated. And maybe you're here right now. Either you know somebody that you're dealing with has been deflated, or you know that if things don't change. You know the wind's going to come out of your cell soon. And you need God to help you get it back in order. I'm talking to you right now. With nobody looking, every eye closed, every head bowed. Put the hand up. I see myself hitting that way. i got to do something. All right, here we're going to pray together, okay? We're going to do it this way. Y'all just, just follow me, okay? Lord, Lord, there's no one, there's no one on, this earth. on this earth. There's no one in heaven. There's no one in heaven. Or hell. Or hell. That's greater, that's greater than, you. than you. God, I need you. God, I need you. To do a work in my life. To do a work in my life. I rededicate myself. I rededicate myself. To you. To you. I trust you. I trust you. To help me. To help me. Be strong. Be strong. In this last day. In this last day. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. That although I may have a deflated spirit. It doesn't have to stay that way. It doesn't have to stay that way. I trust you. I trust you. I will. I will. With your help. With your help. No longer. No longer. Praise the enemy. Praise the enemy. But I will praise you. But I will praise you. When I go in the battle. When I go in the battle. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. This day. This day. Will forever. And forever. Be marked in my spirit. Be marked in my spirit. As the day. As the day. That I refuse to praise the enemy. And I will always, with your help, praise you first. In every battle. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. God Remember this, y'all say this with me. The task ahead of you. Is never as great. It's never as great. As the power behind you. The power behind you. Amen. Amen. Tuesday night we start we're having a good time. And we get deep. That's really cool. That's really, 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 really that's the coolest part of all. Amen.
Let's come on an hour or two tonight. We're talking about uh, this, I think, is the last. I think this is going to be finally the last night on the deflated spirit. And then we're going to talk about triggers. And I'm not talking about Roy Rogers' dog. <laughs> Amen. So, so something good. Something good is coming. Tell us that something's good is coming. Y'all say that. Something good is coming. Amen. 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 Brother Ben, we dismiss us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we've had to be in this your house this morning. As we go forth, Lord, keep reminding us that the battle is yours, and we should do as you tell us, because indeed, the task ahead of us is never as great as the power behind us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.